Hi everyone, I'm Daryl Chang, creator of Houseplant Journal and author of The New Plant Parent. And welcome to my Inspire session as part of the Cambridge Live Experience. I'm really excited to share some tips with you on how you can maximize your enjoyment with houseplants and minimize your worries. I call this the keys to happy houseplants and plant parents. I hope you'll be inspired to try some indoor gardening and make some time for yourself in between teaching. So where did all of this begin? Well, several years ago, when I was still living at home with my parents, my mom said, Daryl, help me decorate this house with some houseplants. But she also added, uh, you need to figure out how to take care of them because I'm bad with plants. Uh, but this confused me because my mom taught me how to do all kinds of outdoor gardening. We grew vegetables, we had lots of annuals and perennials. And so what was so different about houseplants? Anyway, I just bought a bunch of plants and then went online and looked up some information on how to take care of them. And you know, you probably came across this kind of uh, typical advice, like water weekly, bright indirect light. If the leaves turn yellow, you're overwatering. And if the tips turn brown, maybe you should raise the humidity by misting or using a tray of pebbles. Now, you know, there, there was nothing quite wrong with this advice all by itself, but underlying it, there seemed to be this notion that if you can provide somehow proper care, that you should expect to have perfect plants forever. Um, but most of the time, what ends up happening is a lot of self-blaming and disappointment. And so this is what brings me to the first key, and that is take a holistic approach when you're taking care of houseplants. And more specifically, uh, number one, you need to understand your environmental conditions. Number two, try your best with care. And number three, let nature take its course. And so that's why on the right here, you see a Dracaena marginata, and I had just pulled off a whole bunch of these um, yellow leaves from all these stems. Now, under the traditional advice, you might be thinking, well, uh, am I overwatering? Am I underwatering? But if you look closely at this trunk, every line is actually the scar of an older leaf that has fallen off. And so this is just how the plants grow. Newer leaves grow at the top and older leaves fall off the bottom. And this is not just some exception for this particular case. This is pretty much the rule for all plants. Now, the second key is about light. And, and the matter of light indoors is not as simple as just sun or no sun. We, we need to understand what does this bright indirect light really mean? So the, the first problem is actually the human perception of light. Like maybe you've tried this. Have you ever tried to take a picture uh, from the inside during the day of a scene outside, you'll notice that the indoors is way too dark. Then you change your camera exposure to get the inside bright enough to see the details, but now the outside is just totally washed out. Why, why is it that through our eyes, we see an image that seems to be uh, nicely detailed both outside and inside? Well, the truth is, it's not that your camera is not good, it's actually that your brain is doing a kind of Photoshop merging of the two, so that way you can make out the details of both. So although that's great for us humans to identify our surroundings, that's exactly the reason why humans are bad at judging absolute brightness. So since I studied engineering and I love to measure things, I said, why don't we just measure indirect light? And then I came up with this long list of all kinds of uh, plants along with their general light requirements. But the problem was that not many people were willing to get themselves a light meter and, and actually measure it. So if I can give you just like the simplest definition of what bright indirect light really means, that would be you should consider what my plant sees, as in what's the dome that completely surrounds the plant. Number one, you want to make sure that the plant can see as much of the open sky as possible. That means closest to your windows. That means more windows, the better. Skylights, even better. And the second consideration is 
block the direct sun only if the duration will exceed roughly two or three hours. Now, obviously for different plants, the tolerance is different, but in general, two or three hours is what is generally tolerable for most plants that want bright indirect light. Now I wanna contrast this to what bright indirect light does not mean. It does not mean that just anywhere in the room is fine. This is because we want to make sure that we meet the minimum indirect light requirements. And number two, you should not think that bright indirect light means that you need to avoid the sun entirely. Remember, it's only to avoid prolonged exposure. Now you might be wondering, well then where did this saying thrives in low light uh, come from? Well, I think this is because it's a miscommunication between horticulturalists and interior designers. You see, when a horticulturalist defines a space that has low light, what they are referring to is that the duration of unobstructed sun uh, is very low. Such a place would be like under the canopy of a forest, where even though the, the trees and the leaves block a little bit of the sun, the overall sky is still not completely obstructed. On the other hand, inside your living room, far from windows, which are in this case not even that small, uh, the rest of your walls and your ceiling are opaque to the sky. And so the comparison is really not that accurate. Now to make this really obvious, if I was to darken out all the parts of this picture except for the sky, well now we can see that it doesn't really make sense to characterize the inside of your living room to be similar to a forest. So the next time you hear the phrase thrives in low light, I think what you should really think is that this plant just dies slower and less noticeably than other plants. Now the third key is watering strategies. And to illustrate this point, I'm gonna ask you, how often do you fill up your car, as in put gas in the car? Is it once a week? Uh, maybe you would say when the tank reaches a quarter, but basically it's whenever it needs. So even if I have a Honda Civic and I say that I put gas in it once a week, that doesn't mean that just because you also have a Honda Civic that therefore you need to put gas in it once a week. Like you understand that that's not how the rationale works for filling up your car. Well, for plants, it works the same way. It is not a schedule, it is based on need. That's how, when sometimes I show people this picture and they wonder, how do you keep track of watering all your plants? And I tell them there's nothing to keep track of because it's not a schedule. It is based on observing the soil dryness. That is the strategy of watering a plant. So when it comes to watering strategies, there's really only three different ways to do it. The first is water when the soil is completely dry. Now this applies to most cacti and succulents. Next is water when partially dry, and this applies to most of your tropical foliage plants. And the last type is keep the soil evenly moist. And most notably, uh, the maidenhair fern is one of those plants that you have to keep the soil evenly moist at all times. Now you'll notice that there's a little asterisk here, and the reason is because all of these strategies only work given adequate light because light is what drives the plant to make its own food. So none of these watering strategies is going to do any good for a plant that's sitting in a dark corner. So here is an example of a plant that you water when the soil is completely dry. This is a whale fin sense of area and you're watching about uh, 80 days of time-lapse footage. So basically during that time, I would just look at the soil and only when it was completely dry, then I would pour some water into it. There are many different types of snake plants, so it's uh, really fun to grow a collection of, of just snake plants. In terms of care, you wanna put them where they have the widest possible view of the sky, and don't be worried about them if the sun shines on them for even up to six hours. And water when the soil is completely dry. Now for a pothos, here you're looking at a pothos marble queen, you want to water it when the soil is partially dry. But if you let the soil get a little too dry, then you'll start to see the leaves uh, droop a little bit 
And that's really the signal to water it immediately. So what you're seeing here is the, the recovery over, uh, this is about eight hours, I think. In terms of light, you wanna make sure that the plant is getting the widest view of the sky and it can tolerate about two or three hours of direct sun. And lastly, for a plant like maidenhair fern, you wanna keep the soil evenly moist. So in this time lapse, you can see that uh, the change in the weight of the pot is mostly due to uh, the consumption of, uh, of water by transpiration and evaporation. So that's why uh, the weight of the pot is a good way to check it. And the other thing that a lot of people talk about with maidenhair fern is that it wants high humidity. Now, the reason why I put a hygrometer to show you that even at 42% uh, humidity, that's fine for a maidenhair fern. It's, it's not that you have to mist it or put a humidifier. The key to growing a maidenhair fern is the consistent soil moisture. Uh, because if you let it get to even the point of half dryness, then you may notice a lot of the fronds uh, start to die back. So to summarize, the keys to having happy houseplants and plant parents. Number one is take a holistic approach. Understand your environmental conditions, try your best with care, but also let nature take its course. Number two is about light. Consider both the view of the sky and also the duration of direct sun. If the sun's duration will be too long, then you should block it with a white sheer curtain. And number three, watering strategies. Think of watering as a strategy and not strict schedules. So I hope you enjoyed these tips and that they brought you some clarity uh, in your houseplant care. If you want to learn more, you can check out my book, The New Plant Parent. Uh, it's available anywhere books are sold. You can also check my online course, The Essentials of Houseplant Enjoyment. And this is where I go into a lot more depth to give people uh, a solid foundation uh, for houseplant care. And lastly, you can reach me uh, on socials at Houseplant Journal, or you could send me an email at help at houseplantjournal.com. Yes, you can ask me plant questions. I'm Daryl from Houseplant Journal, and I hope you enjoyed this Cambridge Live Experience Inspire session.